How's it going, guys? This is Forensic Forks with Deontay, and I'm back with another video. Welcome to November. So last month, October, we were tracking NJ. It was pretty lethargic. Price action was moving sideways. We didn't really move any higher in the next 20 days from the beginning of the month of October. We were just range bound. Every time we thought price was going to make a lower low and continue that trend, price tends to stall, then come back up and raid that lower swing high. And then after breaking that swing high, after getting a higher swing low, we would think price would continue to go higher. Instead, it comes down and breaks the swing low. So NJ wasn't worth talking about at some point during the month. And I just completely left it alone, took a break, was enjoying my time. And now we're going to focus back up in November because we have a new month, new trading month. There were other pairs during the month of October, of course, that were trending greatly, you know. Um, we had EU, GU, many of the majors, right? UK, you sort of see dollar, the, the bond yields, two-year, five-year, 10-year, 30-year. You're moving very fastly. And now we're going into November. We have the election coming up. So I would be careful trading this week. Might be a lot of carnage. A lot of volatility will be injected into the market. We're going to see probably a new turnover to whoever is going to be the new U.S. president. And we're going to see funding, you know, into certain co corporations and companies in certain sectors change up a little bit, right? And overseas and how people are going to be taxed on tariffs and import and exports. We're going to see a lot of those things change. We also have interest rates, right? The Fed's trying to maintain inflation. So there's a lot of things that are going on. Be careful. <laughs> Please be careful. So we're going to be tracking gold. That's what I have set up right now. Currently. So we have the IPTO look back data range. We have 20 right here. Twenty bars, another twenty bars, the forty. See that? Another twenty, sixty. Let me go forward twenty bars. There you go. Once I look or cast forward range, so we're expecting the market to do something within the next twenty days. At the start of this month. Every twenty days, the market is going to most likely seek a new buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity on the higher time frame, or there's that ch chance of it consolidating for the next twenty days. Right now, I do not think it's going to consolidate. I do think it's going to be very volatile. It's at all-time highs. It currently just formed a, some people would call this a, excuse me. Some people would call this a BPR. You have a bear shorter block too. We have a fair value gap on the downside. We also have November's opening price. We all know that anything above the monthly opening price is a what? It's a premium, right? That makes sense. Anything above the opening price, above fair value, the starting price of the month, it's going to be more expensive. Anything below it, it's going to be cheaper. And that's what we would call a discount. And it'd be cheaper to buy down here. Now, depending on our speculation, right, there are going to be times where the buyers that are looking for cheap buys will find an opportunity that presents itself and they can find a winning trade. Not saying it's going to be a home run trade, but they could definitely probably find a winning trade. Same thing, vice versa. For those that are looking to sell in a premium, when those conditions are met and they finally find something along the setups on their model and they take that short, they could find a winning trade. But does it mean it's going to be a home run? No. But I am searching for a home run. Me personally, right? I'm looking for a swing trade. And I tend to use the macros to help me understand that. So for example, Hopefully you guys can see my screen still. We would come over to here. And we would look for the DXY. And look for the dollar index. You want to see what it's doing. November. It looks like it's mainly bullish. So that's very interesting, right? Now I want to take a look at gold. Let's see what gold is looking like. bullish as well so now what i would prefer 
I would prefer to have one of them going in opposite directions. So the fact that they're both going up in the same direction tells me that one of them is going to be lying this month. Now, we're going to see from the price action and see whether or not gold is going to continue to rally or is gold going to top and come down. Right now, there is signs. Right, go back to the current price action. This is a Larry Williams smash candle. Right. This price action here, this candle opens, takes out the previous daily high, runs up, and closes very close to its high. Most times you'll see when the market, right, if you read the book from Larry Williams, Long-Term Secrets to Short-Term Trading, he would say that when you start to see daily candles or bars that close higher into its life cycle, you're going to most likely see the market is exhausting itself. There are signals saying, oh, there might be a turning point. Now, whether that's short-term or long-term, Right. There are some moments and times where we see the market really move up and ramp up and close very close to its high or the high is the close. Right. The actual close of the day is the high. We see many daily candles like that, like this candle here. Look, it's close. It closes all the way up here. Which is the eye. And then look at the next day. It opens, runs up and sells really fast. Right. It really turns around because this day here looks very bullish. And at any moment in time, you can be caught off guard. So the same thing happens here. You can see here, price comes up, closes above here. Traders the next day might be looking for a breakout above this previous daily high. Price does run that high a little bit, but then dramatically runs down quickly, right? This place is so fast, distributes lower, takes out the previous daily low and the day before that as well. Then the next day, price opens up, runs up. Looks like it's going to pull back up, right, and change and go back into its normal trend. But instead, it breaks down again. Doesn't take out the previous daily low, though. I would like it to. And we can see November here. Price opened and ran up the entire time. Right, filling it in some type of inefficiency probably on the lower time frame here. And then looking to break down again. Now, I would like to see gold sell because we're at all-time highs from that perspective. Now, if we were to look at the COT data... I mean, this is something that I don't do often, but it's been a while since I did a daily update, so we might as well pull out all the stops. Is that what I'm looking for? I'm looking for metals, short format. Come down here, and gold should be right here. So you see gold right there. Manage money. Just looking at the, what what's going on. It's a lot of longs. A lot of shorts. Let's go back. Let's go to the long format. Where's gold at? There we are. So again, shorts are not heavy, but there's a lot of longs still on gold. I want to see if this changes suddenly. As we go into next week. Now, I wouldn't look to trade this week because of the U.S. presidential election. So be careful. But I want to see what's going to happen the, the following week. And I want to see if we're going to get a breakdown into this weekly busy. Yeah. It's closest PDRA or inefficiency that's very large that we haven't filled in. So I want to see if we get some type of draw here, some type of pull into this. Now, many people might say, oh, it might be a retracement to go higher. That's true. But right now, I want to see if we can at least get a draw into this range at some point. Now, looking at this price action here, we have this last down close candle, or even this last down close candle. We have a series of down close candles, and then a rally higher. Could have some type of breaker scenario. Price trading back up into this candle's high, trading into it, and then running back higher. Who knows? It's a lot of speculation, right? You can speculate a lot about the market, but let's take it as face value. Right now, we had a swing high. One, two, three. Actually, who's higher? Let me double check. This is higher. So this is the swing high here. One, two, three. You broke down. You have some, some, some type of top formation that formed here. Now, if it's going to continue going lower, I want to see it to break the third candle's low. And then the following candle Tuesday have a high probability scalp to that low. So if we get to get that next daily candle tomorrow to be lower and it runs out this Monday's low, Tuesday runs out uh, Monday's low, I want to see if Wednesday is going to continue to sell off. I want to see if it's like going to pick up pace too. 
And I want to see price move up into premium territories during the weekly range, during the kill zones, right? Midnight opening price, London opening price, New York opening price, Asian session opening price. I want to see it move above those points and probably find a sell scenario. I want to see. And we'll study that as price goes along this week. Now, another pair that we're going to be tracking is GE. Like I said, this is going to be very interesting because the interest rates are the same. Now, many people ask, oh, where do I get my interest rate information from? I just go to this website here, globalrates.com. Hopefully, you guys can see the tab that I'm showing. If not, I'll have to go back and um, redo this. So the Fed's current right now, right before they dropped it by what? 50 basis points recently. And then you go to the Bank of England. Where is it at? There we go. The BOE. They cut theirs by a quarter, right? 25.25 basis points. So now they're both at a standstill. So personally, I do think that these markets are going to most likely be range bound, right? Because it's a strong versus strong currency. There's not a big push to say, I mean, unless there's a heightened sense of urgency because there's a U.S. presidential election and rates are changing. Um, maybe the dollar is more sought after in general as a, as a base currency. Who knows? But from a black and white standpoint, there's no argument for what currency you would want to get into, right? The yield, right? The yield is still 5% in both countries, right? In the UK and in America, the rates are still 5%. It's not like, oh, one has a quarter higher than the other or a point higher than the other to say, oh, you know, to make that breaking decision. But I might think the breaking decision is that, oh, we're the feds, you know, we're the United States of America. We're one of the, you know, best countries in the world, supposedly, you know, that could be subjective, of course. Right. But I do think that GU is going to have a tough time this month, but if we had to mark it up, this is what I would do. So we would start out IPTA. I'm going to go for 20 bars. Since we're on a daily chart, that's why I'm counting the 20 bars with this tool. The way I get this tool is by hitting shift and dragging and clicking, and it comes up. There. I'm going to go 40. Yeah, I hit shift, and I click, and it pops right up. And then it's 60. Now, at this point now, I just look for the highest high and lowest low in each one of those three quadrants. There are 20 bar quadrants. So we got this low. Mark it off in blue for our swing lows. This is the highest high. Sometimes it's not even a swing high. It's just a high, the highest point within those two levels. High up here. What we got down here? A low. This one happened to be a swing low. And I'm drawing it all the way out to the up the 20 day cast forward. 60 day low. Let me get that 60 day high here. These could be areas of interest or where the market can give significant reactions around. Right? You could form some type of trade idea. Whether it's during the kill zone, price gets around this area, you see some type of PD array around here that is signifying support on it, right? Some classic retail support. You may take that idea. Or vice versa, some classic re resistance, right? Retail resistance, you want to take that idea. But we're looking for specific things, right? We're not going from head and shoulders patterns, you know, or bullish bull flag or bearish bull, uh, bearish flag. We're not looking for that. Um, we're looking for PDRAs. We're looking for certain ranges. We're looking for consolidations, price breaking the consolidation, possibly giving us a turtle soup, you know, reversal, or possibly breaking that consolidation and giving us a continuation. So truly think about what you are doing in the market, right? And take calculated risk. Nothing is guaranteed. Right? I was talking to one of my students and I was telling them that, yes, we may have certain models, right? We have the Asian session model. Right. If you're not familiar with the Asian session model, just look at the playlist. You'll find my playlist of the Asian session library. We go over more than 50 examples of this model. It's something that recurs often, right? It's a phenomenon that happens very often. But before I get all, get all sidetracked, nothing is guaranteed, even if you have a model. We can't control this market, but we can control the risk we take in the market. That's the very crucial thing about trading. We're not guaranteed that payout. We're not guaranteed that profit. 
right? There's a risk. There's a disclaimer that we have to take when signing up with brokers or signing up with prop firms or signing up with whatever um, platform you use to trade. There's that risk that the money that you put in, you may not actually make an increase or compound that, that equity. You might actually lose that equity and lose it all too. So that's that full risk you take. But we need to calculate our risk. How much are we willing to risk on this trade? How much are we willing to risk in one month? How much are we willing to risk throughout the span of a year? Right, you got to think about these things. It's very important. Outside of that, we can't control what the market does. It's going to do whatever it wants, but we're taking calculated risks and speculations. But we want to frame it, right? We want it to be as objective as possible, not subjective. We want to layer in ideas that would be objective. Okay, gold's at all-time highs. Okay, there's a U.S. presidential election. Oh, inflation might be coming down. Oh, the central banks around the world and the major countries, they're starting to probably go into their cutting cycle, right, with the interest rates, while the BOJ is probably looking to hold and hike rates, right? So it's a lot of things going in the market. We want to take that data, that macro information, have an intermarket analysis. Look at all the other pairs too, right? What is GU, AU, gold, dollar? It's a lot, right? It's comprised. It's an onion. There's a lot of things that are going on. So we take these ideas to formate some trades. That's the how I've been doing it from the beginning of the year. To go back at the beginning of the daily um, tracking of 2024 playlists, we started tracking oil first, right, I believe. And we started tracking all other pairs as well. So if you go back and check the playlist, right, we did oil. After that, we did AJ. After that, we did EU. After that, we did AU, then we did GU, then we did UJ, we did U Swissy, we did EU, we did GJ, we did NJ for a short brief moment, and now we're doing GU and gold. I haven't done gold in a while, so it'll be nice to see gold for sure. We've done GU before. Of course, we're going to run into the same pairs. I'm primarily trying to focus on the majors and the things a lot other traders actually study, right? Keeping it simple. GU right now currently made a swing low. One, two, three. I want to see what this candle does today. It breaks this third candle's high. I want to see if Tuesday, right, continues to push above Monday's high. I want to see that. There is a volume imbalance, right? There's an opening gap here. There's a volume imbalance on this candle here to there. Opened up here. It didn't open above the high, but it opened within the range from the close and the open. So I want to see if price the next daily candle, right? Tuesday probably pulls into this a little bit, refills it, balances it out, and then pushes higher. We'll see. I would prefer price not take out Monday's low. I would prefer price to take out Monday's high instead and continue this bottom, right? Like I said, let's say this is the bottom of a trend that's starting, a new leg that's going to go higher like this, right? Break a swing high, higher swing low. Break a swing high, higher swing low. Down close candles, we buy that because if it's going to trend bullishly, we want to buy and down close candles like this. See, this is a down close candle there. We're going to buy in those uptrends. Down close can like all these down close candles and these uptrends here. Not saying all of them you would be able to predict, but at some point you will if you just practice it. Same thing, vice versa. If you're in a downtrend, you want to look for those up close candles and you're selling those up close candles. But once you find that daily bias in that trend, we can possibly take a high probability guess that price is going to continue in that direction. So we have a swing high here. Let's watch this swing high and see what happens. Maybe we get a large push. Like I said, this week might have a lot of volume injected into the market because of the election. And plus, um, I think what we have FOMC coming up sooner or later. We had NFP last week, Friday. So still a lot of volume in the market. It's the beginning of a new month. So that previous month's, um, strength will probably carry into the first week so be careful of how you trade this week take calculated risks if not stay out of the market take it easy come back next week reevaluate what swing points be recently broken on the higher time frame daily what pda rates have you reached on the weekly time frame as well and what has the monthly been doing right monthly chart is important a lot of people like to not look at the higher time frame premise look at the monthly chart because the same things that you're seeing on a lower time frame is happening on the monthly, just on a larger grand scheme, right? Hopefully you found this insightful. Peace.